Good morning, everyone. This is Noshi Mukhtar, and you are watching the Business Excellence Show. Today, myself and Fleming are going to talk about positivity and how we can stay positive in uh, testing times when things are different and unexpected and when we do not know anything about what's coming up in the future. So uh, before we begin any of our conversations, let me say this. Very welcome to this show. I'm so glad to have you with us. We would love to have your interaction, excellent interaction today. And you are supposed to comment a lot. You're supposed to talk to us while we are on the show because we are going to show all your comments to all our friends and we are going to answer them as well. So Fleming, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I am good because this is my choice every morning. You know that very well. So even yeah. though I went to bed about three or four o'clock this morning, because I, uh, I actually had a great, I, I know I have a great opportunity. So I was working a lot um, with the government in the UAE, uh, focusing on a lot of different things. Exactly what we're talking about right now, how to stay positive and how to be resilient, how to prompt your brain, how to, why is it that somebody just bounced back immediately what is their secret <laughs> how are they prompting their brain what are their brain bubbles how does the brain work some of the things we need to focus on today and sure. how can we you can say decide our attitude that's what i do every morning i choose my attitude every single morning and how can we influence other people's attitude uh, and how can we spring back, blend or, or bend and adapt to an ever-changing world? And I really want you to ask questions today. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I love interaction and, and so on and so on. So, uh, and so on and so on. So is what I, yes? While we are uh, in the show and we are talking about positivity, we are going to share your own experiences, how you are feeling about things around you these days. Um, how you are taking care of your health, how you are ensuring that you will stay positive despite everything else. Yes. So these are the things that you are going to share with us while we go on with the show. And we already have started getting your comments. And here is Muhammad Idris. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Muhammad. Hope all is good at your place. Otherwise, you just choose it and it becomes. True. <laughs> All right, Fleming. So let's discuss what is positivity. And what is closing positivity? your eyes to all this down time is positivity? No. Yes. No. Yes. Tell me. <laughs> so what is positivity? When I went from a leader in a bank into a depression and was looking into a white wall for, uh, you can say, three months, I got a little fear in the beginning. And because I feeded that fear, it exploded and it become it filled everything. It took about every you can say everything away from me because I was totally blinded by fear. Uh, the other part is that when I died and <laughs> anyway, I, I, I was brought to hospital and, and, and stuff like that, I actually reversed everything, but I didn't do know what I was doing. I I, I was just I didn't know, I just started doing. I was standing on so you hold. Everything in your mind. Yes, uh, everything was reversed in 24 hours. I was now right. standing on hold. The other part is that guilt and shame, which has clouded my whole perspective, which has clouded my whole navigator. Uh, what I was seeing was not reality. It was all going on inside of the head. So now I was standing on hope, and hope has uh, willpower, hope has intention, and hope has uh, action. But but I need to put in some positivity. I need to I need to I need to have an idea, or I need to stay positive. I need to feed my 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 branches. If we have the tree, the feelings we have here, the branches, the emotions, the trunk, and the roots without a physical state of my body. So I just started doing, and every time people asked me, 
what are you doing? I could not explain actually. I was just doing, and I couldn't explain it in a way that could be understood. Most people said, if I gone through what you gone through, I will have killed myself. And yes, I was, I had the opportunity to do that. I just needed to put myself on a couch and then it would happen. But then I had an encounter with the universe and everything was, you know, totally shifted. So what did I actually do? I paused. You can say we have an ever changing world and to rem remain successful, we must take time to adapt and change it. We must take time to, you can say, take out the automated thoughts, the beliefs we got that is no longer benefiting us. So, so, so when we have uncertainty, we will automatically go into stress and anxiety. We have a lack of focus. So, so what did I do? I, 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 I started to, to update my, 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 my brain. I started to unlearn with all the things I thought was reality, all the beliefs I had. I needed to reverse all those beliefs. So, so I paused. And when we pause, it could be 10 seconds before we do something. Can you follow what I'm saying now? So, so if I'm sitting looking at the stock market and, and, and a stock is going down, I become fearful. I'm losing money. Sell it. Poof. And it's only going down three seconds. Then it pops up again. But I sold it when it was at the lowest. That was my reaction. That's automatic. So I need to pause. Look, the most interesting, the most yes. interesting statement you made during the story is, uh, "You will die if you in, if you are in my place." This kind of a statement everybody makes whenever somebody is facing some testing times or they have some trouble. They have this typical statement telling people, "If you are in my place, you will not be able to tolerate that." Yes. <clears throat> so, so the part is, what are we talking here? We're talking resilience. That is the way, that is, that is the reason some people are actually bouncing back very fast. We can talk about splatters and bouncers. A splatter is something, poof, going down and poof, being glued to the floor and not rising up again. That was what I was. I was a splatter. So now I learned to be a bouncer. Yes. You can say reality may put me down. I may have a splat, and then I just bounce up again. That's my choice. So every time I'm facing, you can say, and it's easy for me today. I was talking to Shiva. I don't know if you know him or Shiha. And, and, and we had the same experience, you can say. We bounced or we splatted out, and then we started doing and bounced back. But some people don't do that because they don't have resilience. Yes. So, so what I, I learned... Is, like you say that you made the conscious choice to be resilient. Yes, I did. I, I know that... I'm are not even aware of this fact that they can make a choice to be resilient. They can bounce back no matter what. They don't need to be splatters. The part is you uh, become a splatter in the moment you let the things you can't control control you. How much worry do you put inside? I put a lot of worry inside my head. And what, what, what was a little worry <laughs> just exploded and became very, very big because I was focusing on it. And it was something I couldn't do anything about. So could I park this, those things? Yes. I could give them away. I didn't need to focus on them. I could start, you could say, pause. 10 seconds, get clarity, reset, look around, change perspective, change, you can say, yeah, ponder, wonder, and start exploring. Because the things you can't do anything about, talk them. Focus on the things you can do something about and get clarity. What is my win? If I, you know, pause and I stop and take an extra breathing. When the stock goes down, I would not just react and sell it and take a loss. No, I would wait and say, okay, fine. Yeah, 
as long as I didn't sell the stock, I didn't lose. And three hours later or three weeks later, it's bounced back and I earned money. So, so many times we just react out of fear, stress, and anxiety. And then we actually put ourselves in a shit, no, secret hidden information technology. But then we put ourselves in a bad situation. How many times do we do that? Just reacting out of fear. Majority of people, like most of us, are reacting to situations. And we are yes. reacting to our own responses as well. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. This is what I've observed. And that's where the whole mess happens. Because you, you choose to react in a certain way that does the destruction for you. And you feel like you're going to spiral up or instead of bouncing back. Yeah, the point is that you react and you said the right word, put yourself in a mess. Because is that beneficial for us just to react out of fear, stress, anxiety? No. no. If we started thinking of what we are thinking of, if we paused, okay, fine. What am I going to do now I have this situation? So I start focusing, thinking of what I'm thinking of. I expose my thought. Because the part is that what is first happening is emotional. We humans are emotionally driven people. We are also illogical, very illogical. And, and the part is here that, that we mostly just react. So, and, and, and the emotion let, get a, makes us make a response, which is not at all logical. And if we make an emotion, emotional reaction then we'll start you can say ju uh, justifying ourselves so what is happening here we have an emotional reaction and then we start putting logical in to fit that it's not working can you follow what i'm saying now i'm starting rationalizing and justifying my reaction is that what's happening when i bring myself into the mess you were talking about before so so we are driven to an emotional reaction and then we need to justify and rationalize by logic after that. Mm -hmm. And this is not good. So if we could take the pause and then, then focus and think about what we're thinking about, focus on that. This is the critical part where we actually need to raise awareness of conscious quality thinking. I love the word unlocking potential. That's what we are working with here. So, so I'm starting yeah. to question my reaction. Okay, fine. The stock is going down. Is it good to sell or should I not sell or should I wait or uh, is it okay or things are happening for me? I start questioning those things. I'm changing my perception. I'm changing my navigator. I take away my assumptions. My assumptions of money is that this is scarcity, especially the, in these times. So when the stock goes down, poof, I'm selling. And three hours later, or was that? Then it's back where it was before. But I assume that I'm going to be poor. My scarcity is speaking to me immediately. So, and in the stock market, that's well, if you sell, you sell. And it's got, if it goes up, is bad for you. If it goes further down, it would be a great idea. But <clears throat> I need to make the decision consciously. So when something is happening around us, I said questioning. I said perspective. I said assumptions. And I need to challenge the right answer. What is the right answer? My immediately reaction to sell a stock because it goes down is to is that's the immediately reaction and it may not be the right answer when somebody is confronting you judging you or whatever i can i can say you know what this is his programming when he's pointing at me he's telling all about him i'm going to listen i want to know who he is so i'm just sitting relaxing when when i come home and the whole thing is a mess there's shoes everywhere i can get angry immediately or i can just say wow what, what, why is this, what can we do about this? And then I can ch change my perspective. I may be totally stressed out at work. And this was the final thing that made me the drop, the filter glass and make me explode. 
So if I'm just relaxing and saying, okay, fine, this is not good. What can we do about it? So, so that's where we question, we, we change our perception, assumptions, and we're questioning the right answer. And the right answer, where does that come from? Where does the right answer come from? We are not updating our brain. Where's my right answer coming from? It's coming from my parents. I downloaded all their programs and all their, you can say, social intelligence. It's coming from school yeah. where we are programmed the always. On the right. What? We have no Yeah, and it may not at all fit because the world is changing totally. If, if we can, if I'm looking at my parents, they had uh, peas, they had carrots, and all of those things was growing in the garden. But what do I do? I go to the supermarket and buy everything. I'm not growing anything. I was actually <laughs> surprised the other day. I was, I was in Kefur in Ibn Batuta, and there they're growing everything. That's technology. They don't need earth anymore. 50 years ago, my parents was growing carrots, la, 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 all that kind of stuff in the garden. And today it's growing in the supermarket. So everything outside has changed, but the part is that our we are not updating our brain. And by course, we're not updating our brain. We may mm -hmm. make a lot of, you can say, bad decisions or messy decisions. Right. So you think that we need to change the way we think and respond to things? Absolutely. We not need to know <laughs> we, we, what is happening here for, for me and, 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 and when I started doing things and when I'm connecting two neurons and the neurons is actually that the connection with the brain and other body parts, when the more I use that highway, the more I will automatically use it in the future because the more stronger it becomes. So, uh, yes, uh, for me, I needed to unlearn all what I learned in the age of 45 and ditch it, put it in the dumpster because it was not working for me. And then I needed to relearn. So, so here we need to understand how is the brain working. And here we're working with neuroplasticity. So how to use our brain to stay positive? Focus. What is going around you? What is going around you? So we need to learn to focus on winning. We need to learn to focus and find what winning looks like to me. What is a clear, crystal clear win for me in my business or in my professional or in my personal life? What does it exactly look like? What we're talking here is, is a little bit like passion. Find your passion. My life is ideal when. We're talking about goal mapping. We are, we, we are dreaming now. So I need to find a crystal clear path or a crystal clear picture of my win. So what is my win in life? When am I successful? What does it look like? I need to visualize it. I can draw it or I can find pictures on the internet. So, so what are we doing here? What did I do? which I did not know 10 years ago when I started doing that. I took a, a, a positive picture. I visualized. I found my, you can say, crystal clear win. So for me, it was easy. I, I didn't have a home. I didn't have a lot of things. I went for the day after when I was out of the hospital. I went for a friend. I knocked his door. I was so full of guilt and shame before my 24 hours reversal, uh, that, that disappeared. I got the courage to knock his door and he could have asked me or said to me, who are you? I haven't seen you for a year. Oh, uh, it, here is $100 and here is a bag of food. It's uh, too old, you need to eat it fast. And, and, and the other part here is that here is some old clothes. So please go away. No, he was generous. He invited me in, we sat for a cup of coffee and we started talking. He was very generous and generosity is not giving away the things you don't need, it's actually involving. And for me, generosity is time. So he invited me in, and we started talking, we connected with the municipality. I got, you can say, um, a place to live and all that kind of stuff. So, so, so this was my win, I needed a place to stay. That was very clear for me 
that was what I started visualizing. So I started visualizing my home and me having a place to stay. So, so for because I didn't have anything, that was very easy. And because I lost everything, I also lost the fear of losing. I lost scarcity. Can you follow what I'm saying now? So what we think we have or what we have, the fear of losing is speaking all the time. Is that right or wrong? Yes, we most of the time we are making our decisions in response to this fear of losing. Even when yes. we are backing off, even when we are refusing to bounce back, it's from the fear that we will not be able to do it. That so there what is something talking, bigger out there yes. that poses so, bigger challenges. So what we are normally doing, we're, we're touching something very, very essential right now. We are working hard not to lose. Is that the perception of most people? You may say yes or no. If, if the perception is I'm working hard not to lose, am I feeding mm. positivity or am I feeding, because we're now talking about where does positivity come from? Am I feeding, am I, am I doing things out of fear or am I doing things because I got a crystal clear picture of my win? What is my driver here? Yeah. So I'm working hard not to lose. This is a very wrong perspective. I need to have a crystal. I need what we're talking here is how the elite is working. They are visualizing their win. They have a crystal, crystal clear picture of their win. And they talk presumptive language. What is presumptive language? That is, as I already done it. So when I'm talking about my win, I'm already done it. Because my brain can't recognize the difference between imagination and reality. So, so if I speak from my arrival point and not from my departure point, that's a very big difference. Is it or is it not? If I have the positive, clear picture of my win and I already done it, you can take Roger Bannister who broke the one mile record. When he did it, everybody did it. It became, but before he did it, everybody told him it was totally impossible. Your heart will explode, it can't be done and all that kind of stuff. So what are we putting up here? What are we putting up here? We are putting our beliefs and they are standing in the way of our success. Exactly. We are criticizing, we are judging and, and so on. So, so if we are, you can say, having a wrong perspective and we are, we are judging the future according to our beliefs, then we are really in trouble. Is that right or wrong? Yes, that's because right. That's right. So, so the part here is that, that if I speak as I've already done it, if I have the pictures of my arrival point, you remember when we did the goal mapping, we started dreaming, we found our main goal, and we found our sub-goals. We have a main goal, it was to drive a Ferrari, but there is something <laughs> which needs some other goals, which needs to be fulfilled because I can drive my red Ferrari. And we made a timeline, we started reasoning, we put emotional reasoning on, why should I have this Ferrari? Is it giving me freedom and, and all that kind of stuff? So we started putting emotions into that, the why. And then we started to make the timeline when I'm I driving the Ferrari. And then we started finding the how, which actions is needed to reach my sub goals and my main goals. And then we put on the how, who can help me reach my goals? And that's very essential too, because if you want to reach your goal, are you standing in your own circle, not asking other people to help you? Most people are. If I'm asking Nusheen, because I know, what? Yeah, the part is I'm, I, I'm asking you and you're doing my marketing because I don't have a clue about doing that. And I'm asking right. you, uh, if we're talking about youth and, and, and we're talking about a girl and she's not a very good hairdresser, she may not ask her best friend who is very good at putting up hair because that's embarrassing or she's too proud. So, 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 so the, 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 the who 
we need to define who can help us. We also need to have the courage to ask for help. Ask for help. Right. And the point is that we as humans are not very good at asking for help. Hmm. Is that right or wrong? We don't need, we, we, we do not want to be in a position where we owe something to somebody. Is that right or wrong? Yes. And, and many of us are even afraid of relying on anyone. Yes. We are really afraid of lying, everyone, maybe because we got disappointed a lot of times. So, so what I'm securing today is I'm only connecting with my 20% giving me 80% outcome. I have a lot of people coming to me and, wow, Fleming, what you're doing is super good. It's super great. I think, I think we could do a lot of things together. And then we start getting involved and I'm giving them three times to show up. If they, if, 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 I'm only asking them three times to be a part of this. And if they're not coming back, I'm just understanding that I don't need to use my time here. I need to move to the people who is having accountability commitment. The people, when I call them and say, you know what, I got this great idea, or when I connect. One of the things I learned in my life is to listen to intuition and vibrations. I'm always pursuing positive energy. Every single human is having energy Every single human is vibrating, but silver tongue devil have nice words. And that's how we're brought up as kids. So we listen, but <laughs> listen to intuition and vibration. And that's what I'm doing when I'm connecting with people. There's many people connecting with me, but I do not connect with a lot of people. I'm very critical. Because so let's take some points from our audience also now. Yes. Yes, because we are getting some comments now. All right. First yes. off, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And I'm getting wonderful comments from your side. I know that you are liking all the explanation that Fleming is giving on how our brain works and how we can uh, tune it into positivity and stay happy, even in times that are not in our favor, even in times that are not predictable for us. I have a comment from uh, Talha Omer. He says, if upbringing is strong for adults, then uncertainty may impact rock solid towards his thinking. And person can fight accordingly in future too. So, so Talha Omer thinks it's through upbringing that an individual can become strong and can remain positive in all kinds of time. Am I correct, Talha? The, 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 the part is here that what he was talking about, if I understood it correctly, is that your upbringing, the way the, 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 the programs you downloaded from your parents is not fitting the world today. You need, you need to understand, and that's, that's what I've been working with for the last 10 years. You need to understand the basic functions of your brain. This is the core techniques. As I said in the beginning, I didn't understand what I was doing. I just started doing it, but I didn't have a clue on, on what I was doing. I just found that putting a picture of my arrival point into my brain, starting feeding my emotions, releasing vasopressin, dopamine, endorphins, oxytocin into my body, changed my physical state, and everything around me started changing. But what was going on? I couldn't explain it. People asked me, how did you survive? How, what, I, I don't know. I, I had an idea. I started doing a lot of research. Uh, but, but, but I know how the epicenter of performance is working today. I have scientifically, biologically, latest research in that area. So understand the basic functions of your brain. Emotional intel. It's very, very important. If I need to, you can say, upgrade my attitude, I need to understand how I can do that by understanding how my brain works. And by going further, I also understand how other people's brains are working. I know their life philosophy. I know their, you can say, obstacles. I know their strengths. I can place the right people on the right seats in the bus. I know exactly their goals. I know which words are tickling their ears? How can I stimulate them to actually 
grow. And that's my passion. So how do I stimulate or manipulate? Manipulate is a negative loaded word, but I'm actually also manipulating, stimulating people. And and it can you see for whatever it is, I would say that a leader needs to stimulate. So a leader needs to understand the basic of the things. The basic of that three pounds up here. How does it work? The amygdala, the hippocampus, the neocortex. How does it work? How do I set my employees or how do I set my partners or how do I set my family, my kids up for a win? How do I speak to them? How do I, you can say, unlock their potential? For me, I needed to unlearn. All the rubbish I have had learned, I need to take away. And I need to grow my self-awareness, raise awareness of conscious quality thinking. I need to expose, that means I needed to pause, I needed to expose my brain, and my thinking. And I need to focus on that before I reacted. I needed to develop my resilience. My resilience is strong and it's even more strong today because I moved from zero it's very normal that you have a conflict, you have something happening in your life, you go into conflict, and then blah, 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 blah. You go down, and then you go to zero. If something is, is happening in your life, you need to go to zero. You need to, you can say, think about it, move forward, go to zero, and it's done, it's out. For me, I moved from the zero directly into love and hope. I'm standing on love and hope. I'm very positive. And for most people, I'm too positive. And they think either I'm a fresh air coming into the room or I'm totally insane because I'm too positive. Yeah. And, 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 and so, yeah. I want to ask our audience to share with us their own experiences as well. Your valuable insights are amazing, Fleming. And let's hear from our friends how they stay positive. What do they do consciously to choose to stay positive? So my dear audience, please share with us uh, different ways in which you absorb positivity and retain it in your life. What are the different things that you are doing that keep you positive? even in uncertain times, even when things are not going right. And uh, while you are writing your comments, let's have more from Fleming. So Fleming, yes, you choose to think positively. You improve, you use your intuition to understand people and understand their behavior and understand their assumptions. And that helps you in dealing with them in a positive way. What are other ways in which you remain positive? Always? First of all, I, I need to grow my own self-awareness. I need to, 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 to think about what I'm thinking about. So, so yes. first of all, I learned to be positive. That's just taking a positive picture, put it into your brain, combine your thinking with the universe, and then start moving. So, so yeah, it's very easy. It's like paint by numbers in reverse. You know, paint by numbers when you was a kid, you had a picture. You had numbers, colors had numbers, and you started painting and you became Picasso. I'm doing that with my brain. I'm just taking a positive picture, and my brain is translating that positive picture. When I was sick last year, I couldn't walk for a couple of months. My left leg became half the size of the right leg. I went my former chiropractor here, just my bones, and I, I started training. In the beginning, <laughs> When I, I tried to run, and, and what happened for my left leg was that it was a couple of, it felt like seconds, but it didn't understand the message from my, my, my brain. So, so I started feeding. I was in stress, and I had fear and anxiety, and the moment I'm having that, I'm shutting down the immune system. So, so I just had pictures of me sitting at the beach, barbecue with my friends, and, and, and me running at the beach and stuff like that. I put that into my brain. And by doing that and imagining that I'm doing that, I released all the good chemicals, biochemicals, the electric signals in my, in my brain. And, and, and now I can run. It's a year ago. I, I started running, I think, 
six months ago, I, I, I went, you know, I went for the beach. I was going walking in the water and all that kind of stuff. And today it's not a problem. And I think it's been a problem for me for 25 years. But now I actually know to take a positive picture, put it in your brain, let the start painting by numbers in reverse, releasing all the good stuff in your body, energizing your body, and parking the things I can't do anything about. I can't do anything. I can't change the weather, can I? But I can put on the clothes to fit the weather. So, so what we're talking about here is stay focused. What we're talking about here is being flexible. What we're talking about here is being proactive. If I'm looking up or I heard in the news that we're going to have rain, I may put on a rain jacket. Yeah. So I am proactive. I may bring my umbrella. But I love the rain, so I'm not going to do that because I love the rain. I love and the I'm, rain organized. <laughs> I'm organized. You see, if you have a lot of water, and if you have uh, put pictures on up at the mirror, whatever, what does your wind look like? Visualize it and put the, those pictures up into your home office, into your workplace, into your car, so you see it and have focus on it. Yes. And that's this where you want to be. Yes. What I found here is that that the basic of our brain is we need to develop awareness and understanding. So how does our brain work? What is going on? We are observing data. We are selecting data. Then we add meanings. According to the record of the past, the meaning is coming from a record of the past. We are making assumptions according to the record of the past. But I'm not in the past anymore. I took the picture of the future and I'm imagining things. So my assumptions and my meanings are changing now. Yes, Can you follow? because the picture is different. Yes, it's not pictures of what had happened. It's pictures of what is going to happen. I start using and putting into my head. And then I know that I will sit on the beach. I know that I will have the barbecue. So that's why I healed myself, you can say. And, and, and then we start drawing conclusions. But a drawing conclusion is again a record of the past. But it, we can't do that. So, so, so when you can say elite stars, uh, we, we have seen uh, many pictures also on LinkedIn uh, of a woman uh, where I think she was... The, the team was very behind, then she stopped running, and then she came up. She had a picture of her breaking the line before everybody else. She was very much behind, but she already had that picture in her head. That's why she did it. She energized and fueled her body. Then we adopt beliefs, but where did our beliefs come from? Our parents, our school teachers, or human factory called educations. But if we are open-minded, if we start exposing our thinking, what is going on now? Now we actually start creating new beliefs. If we're working hard not to lose scarcity and we have a crystal clear win picture, what is now happening? I changed my belief. And that's where I'm moving forward. I'm no longer working hard not to lose. I'm the king. Not I'm the king with the servant of a heart. I'm the king with the heart of a servant. I'm not a king, you know. Okay. And then I take action. Then I start taking action with all that. And the more you do that, and the more you become aware of that, the easier it be becomes. It's easy for me today. And some people call me arrogant or some people call me, you're totally insane. This is impossible. It, it, it can never be done. That's only an expression of their conditioned limited belief or their dreams never coming true and them giving up and still sitting in the couch and not moving forward. I can only brush it off. I know that I'm going to succeed. I already got the picture in my head. I know yeah. that I'm breaking 
the red line as the first, I know I am. I know that. Yeah. But the point is your inner critical voice is popping up. I am yeah. good at prioritizing. I am good at organizing. If you say, I'm not good at organizing, then it'll never happen. You'll never organize. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. It, no, I. it will never. That's if it, I am good at, I know, I'm aware that it may look like you can see very unorganized around me, but I am very good at organizing. That's what uh, my inner self coach is now speaking to me. I'm very good at organizing. Straighten my back, look people straight in the eyes. I know who I am. I did that 10 days after my death. Even though I didn't have a, anything, I just straightened my back. That's what I've been teaching in the 30,000 kilometers of travel in Africa, in Congo, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, whatever. That's what I'm teaching. Straighten your back, look people in the eyes. If you're looking down, you're not seeing anything. I'm not saying that you need to be full of pride. No, you need to have humility. Why am I always putting myself in the room with the 10 most clever people and asking open, curious questions instead of being the cleverest person in the room? If I'm the cleverest person in the room, I'm not growing anymore. If I'm putting myself out where I'm the stupidest person in the room and can ask the open, curious question and I'm having humility and I'm listening, that's the reason why I got two ears and only one mouth, and I'm listening. Then I position myself for my clear, crystal clear win. Can you follow what I'm doing? Yeah. We have yeah. this ladder of, of inference, which is made by Chris Algiers in his first book, uh, or in a book called The Fifth Discipline Field Book by Peter Sanger, and it's from 1994. That's what the books have been reading. And that's why he's talking about how we actually are making decision what is the brain process and that was what i said before the brain process is like that we as humans always want to you can say conclusions assumptions meaning we always always want to put meaning and and, and stuff into things otherwise we're not functional but the world is illogical can you follow what i'm saying it's not we're driving on parkways and yeah. parking on and on stuff so so it is illogical, and, and, and I'm just reversing the process. What if we asked ourselves the questions, what if, instead of the stock going down and sell, I said, what if, and just took a split of a second, what if, if I, there's something else, it couldn't be interpreted in another way, there is more I do not know or I don't know about this. Things has changed. If we ask those questions, if we just pause instead of bringing ourselves into the mess and ask, what if I'm wrong? What if there's something else? What if it could be interpreted in another way? There's more I know or do not know. Or things has changed. If I had my business last year and I, 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 I didn't... The whole COVID process went just, I was still running around and, and knocking a lot of closed doors. Because the COVID, I didn't see that. So I was still physical. I changed my whole business to virtual. So what I had last year, focusing on my clients, focusing on what's going on around me, the whole COVID changed. But if I'm not adjusting, if I had the same numbers, the same, you can say, perception, the, the same view as February 2020, and I didn't adjust to anything, hopefully most of us have adjusted. In some ways, we have seen, we have seen that we needed to go virtual and so on and so on. And that's why we're sitting here right now. We're not meeting physically. But yes. this I is... What? Sorry to cut you short, Tammy. I believe that yes. a lot of uh, leaders have made their adjustments. Yes. 
I believe that too may not be in large international organizations. Um, there's a lot of things now. We have remote workers and so on and so on. And, and some people want to go back to the workplace. Some doesn't. Some are not organized. Some didn't. It's, it's a lot more different to visualize the win. The part is that we assume is when we are focusing uh, or, or looking, we do not believe what we see. Sometimes, and then the part is, what are we seeing? I had have I have had three bank robberies when I was a leader in a bank, and 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 the first one, it was about sixty seconds. It felt like three hours. Uh, time was standing still. The guy came in, pointed a gun, and and then he jumped, and then he took the money, and then he ran out again. He was never found, but but. The part is here that we were 25 people in the room and we had 25 different pictures of that one minute. Different clothing, different everything. Because I see in one way, yes. you see in another, and so on and so on. The, the thing is that we can only comprehend 10%. Our brain can only comprehend 10% of what's going around it. That's why we need to stop, pause, and expose our thinking and focus. So, so here, I, and, uh, the next robbery, I had a gun directly into my head. That's okay. <laughs> and, and the guy said, uh, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Okay. I took out my, my uh, piece of paper and started filling out that piece of paper. So I knew how he looked like. I knew what kind of clothes he got on and so on and so on. But the part is that, as I said, if we don't slow down to move fast, we will all, we could be in a way where we are busy doing, busy being busy doing the wrong things, busy being busy climbing the wrong Mount Everest because we are actually not seeing what's going around us. The part is here that, especially if we're living from a hard work not to lose perspective. We're living from, in a scarcity perspective, we're in stress and shutting down the immune system. That means we may not have that. You know that if you're totally, uh, if, if it's really frustr frustrating uh, for you, then then you, you, you lose energy. If, if we do what I say, take the positive yes. picture, put it in the brain, paint by numbers in reverse, release yeah. or manage your energy, not your time. Then you it's have not just energy, it's also motivation and the willingness to do more. We will lose all of these. Yeah, we will, we will lose a lot of things. If we don't slow down, we'll follow our bubbles or, or our ants, automated negative thoughts. We make 38,000 decisions every single day. We have 12,000 to 16,000 thoughts. We have 95% repeated. I said, you, you're thinking... 95% of the day, you're thinking what you did yesterday and the day before, and you're just repeating yourself. And the other part is that 80% of that is negative. And why is that negative? Because the negative is everywhere. The positive you need to create. The positive you need to create. If you, if you, if you, you can say, stop, pause, ex ex expose your thinking, have a crystal clear picture of your win, then then it is relentless in you. You you know exactly what it's relentless, and and, and you are obsessed by your win. Is that a driver? Is that a driver for you? Not really. You think that being obsessed by your win can be a driver? For some, yes, yes. it can be. Yes, because for if you're some, obsessed, it can be a big source of motivation as well. But yeah, if but, you are obsessed by your win and you're not winning in reality, you can be very badly frustrated. Very badly frustrated. Yeah, but, and you but, can get but, aggressive, you can get yeah. self-destructive, you can start into conscious negative thoughts as well. So, yeah, so it but, works both ways. And then you have and it, the situation it, it, can also play a role in that. Yes, but if you're there, you have not understand a clue of what we've been talking about today. You're not listening to what I'm talking about. Because the part is that that if you are, you can say, 
<laughs> obsessed and relentless in the positive way. What are you doing when you're positive? What am I doing? I'm attracting a lot of people. I have a goal that is unlock potential in every single individual I'm meeting. But I also have the goal that if that person I'm connecting with is not coming back within three times, if I'm calling that no, I person... I got your point. What I'm telling you is that apart from giving out negativity and the positive self-talk and thinking and visualizing that you are winning and being obsessed by winning, you really need to make that happen. You need to be action-driven as well. And you need to be accepting also the consequences that are coming your way so that you are less frustrated if things are not working your The part is that I have my picture of my win. But in reality, in my reality, I wake up in the morning and, 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 and my world is not fitting my win. I'm not putting myself into bed again. I'm not going into a depression. I, and the things I can't do anything about. I, I, I can be totally prepared and, and do my proposal for the government, uh, which I'm working on right now. And they'll come back and say, you know, that, that's not good. That's not. And then I'll just say, you know what? Then we need to speak deeper into that. I can go for a workshop where we have discussed all the objectives and so on. And I have made my PowerPoint presentation, which is only pictures, because I want you to interact. I want you to use your brain. There's no text in my PowerPoint presentations. So I show up and it's not at all fitting. The people are not interacting. The energy is not there. Then I just take my PowerPoint slides and dump them in the binster or dump them uh, in the litter place. And then I started with my whiteboard and then I start with my um, flip chart and then Boom, because I'm starting receiving from my surroundings. I'm monitoring, I'm observing, I'm guided by the universe, if you can say so. I'm guided by the energy of the people, and we start, and it becomes the best workshop they ever had. Even though my preparation, I just, I'm not, I'm never falling out of, you can say, uh, I'm never falling out. I, my, I, I, I don't have, we have brain bubbles, we have beliefs, but I know that everything changes that fast, that I need to be flexible. I'm not standing on what I had prepared. If it's not working, I'm, I'm, I'm starting listening, exposing, hearing, what's going on, what are their troubles, where, where are we headed? And then I'm directing, I'm following, and leading. Can you follow what I'm doing now? Yes. I'm following. Yes, yes, yes. That's flexibility. That's your skill uh, and, and your ability to adapt. Yeah. I know that and my... And absorb the energy around you. Yes. To multiply the positive. Yes. And I, I, I'm not standing on my beliefs. We as humans are so sure that our beliefs are the truth. And the truth is obvious. And, and, and that truth is based on real data. But the, 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 the truth is based on the data we select. So if I'm introducing you to the real data, and then I select the data which fitting my belief, poof, hello, this is not good. Because then I'm just having my bubble. And I'm keeping my bubble. And I need to burst my bubble. And that's what I'm doing every day. I'm not selecting the data. I'm really, really monitoring, observing. And very, very aware of what's going around me. I can step out of my body. When I sometimes have a reaction, I step out of my body, like, you know, and start looking at me and say, what is going on here? That's what I have trained. Remember, my brain was only working with 60% 10 years ago. And I had an IQ below 100. Yeah. So I just started using it. I started creating awareness of how does the episode of performance working. I started finding my passion. I started goal mapping and financial wizard, uh, which is changing my spending habits. So I also have the opportunity to move forward. I started 
raising awareness of myself. And this is just something we do. So we need to burst our bubbles or our automated thoughts. Look at them. Are they serving us? But burst the bubble. Uh, like a, I want you to have the picture of burst your belief bubble. Because what we as humans want to do is prove ourselves right. If I want to prove myself right and I have taken a picture of the future and put it into my head, and that's the picture, that's where I want to be, I always, we as humans always want to prove ourselves right. And that's what we're very good at. So if I have those pictures out there and not the pictures of the past, the judgment, the criticizing, uh, and all that kind of stuff, then my is 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 that a different way of approaching life? Yes, it, it is different, and it does make a difference. It, it even seems a difference if you continue that. Yes, but but it's very very difficult because our brain loves the past we yeah. have up here, our neurons connection. Yes. And it's very, very difficult to break those patterns. But as I said, pause, expose your thinking, and ask questions. What if? It's a simple question. Or where to? One of the things I learned when things didn't go my way, I had the question, where to? I know I always have the best in front of me. So where are we going now? I had, I assumed we needed to go left. But it was not left. <laughs> so where to now? Do I need to go yeah. move forward or do, do I need to go right? right? And the resilience is not to give up. We can go into resilience. Resilience is something I could talk about for years. Uh, yes, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so and the companies who 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 can't ask the questions what if or who cannot develop awareness and understanding and suspend the process don't go according to your beliefs but because your belief is confirmed according to your the data you choose not necessarily reality and the data you choose is coming from your subconscious because you are emotional driven so 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 and burst the bubbles now and then Right, right. All right. Thank you so much, Fleming. It was a great discussion, and I believe everybody learned a lot of different points about how we can stay positive and sustain positivity for a longer period of time. We are going to discuss something different next week, so stay with us for the next episode as well. Have a good yeah. day. Have a good day. Thank bye you, bye. Fleming. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye.